Welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. My lesson today is on reflecting linear functions. Your objective is that you will reflect graphs of linear functions. And here's your question that I want you thinking about today. How does the reflection of a function change its graphical representation? Reflections are transformations that flip over a graph of a line of a reflection. So flips a graph over a line of reflection. Reflections in the x-axis, so here's my line of reflection. You multiply the outputs by negative 1, changing their signs. So we'll have y equals f of x, our parent function and our outputs are f of x. We're going to multiply each output by negative 1 and reflect it over the x-axis. Reflections in the y-axis, you multiply the inputs by negative 1 to change their signs. So our line of reflection is our y-axis. We have our parent function and we take and have the opposite of our input. We take our input, our x values, and multiply by negative 1, and it will reflect over the y-axis. Let's take a closer look at reflections in the x-axis. A reflection in the x-axis can be expressed using function notation, and it will look like this. So y equals negative, remember there's an invisible one here, negative 1 or negative f of x. So for, we're reflecting in the x-axis, we're going to multiply the output by negative 1. And f of x is the same as y, it's our output. There are three ways I'm going to show you how you can do this. You can do it algebraically by multiplying each term of a function by negative 1 that will recreate the reflected function. The second way is using a table of values. We multiply each output by negative 1 and we'll recreate a new set of points to graph the function. And the third way is to reflect points. Identify at least two points on the line and then reflect them over the x-axis to graph the reflected function. First, we're going to graph a reflection in the x-axis using the algebraic method. Here we have the function g is a reflection in the x-axis of function f. We are asked to write the function g in slope-intercept form and graph both functions. So we're given function f, we're reflecting in the x-axis, so here's our x-axis. So the first thing I'm going to do is graph function f. So I have a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of 1 half. So in y-intercept of 1, rise 1, run 2. So here is my function f. Now, if it is a reflection in the x-axis, we know that we're changing all the outputs. So keeping in mind Reflect over the x, change the outputs. Reflect over the y, change the inputs. So now I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to multiply. I'm going to replace f of x with my value of f of x, so negative times my function of x, which is 1 half x plus 1. So you're going to distribute negative 1 to each term, or think of it the opposite opposite. So the function g is actually negative 1 half x subtract 1. So now let's graph this. We're going to have a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of negative 1 half. So here it is. Negative 1 y-intercept, rise 1, run negative 2, and I have my function g. And you can see visually that it's reflected. Here's a point, 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 point. It's reflected over the x-axis. Now, let's look at it with the table method. This is my least favorite, but I always show because you never know who's going to have it as their favorite method. So we're reflecting the same function. It's the same one I just did algebraically. We're reflecting it over the x-axis. And we know when we reflect it that our function g is going to be negative f of x. 
So here's a table of values where I've just picked three inputs, negative two, zero, and two. You could pick any input you wanted, and I'm using this relative to my function f. So when I teach my students to graph a function, back in eighth grade, we just pick inputs and evaluate for outputs. So the first thing I'm going to do is evaluate my function f for my outputs. If I input negative 2, 1 half times negative 2 plus 1 is 0. If I input 0, my output is 1. If I input 2, my output is 2. So now I can go ahead and graph these points. But before I do that, let's evaluate and look at negative f of x, which is the same as my function g. So I'm going to change all my outputs to be the opposite. 0 is just 0, 1 is negative 1, 2 is negative 2. So I've multiplied all my outputs of function f by negative 1 to create my negative f of x, which is my function g. So let's graph these. So negative 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, and I have my function f. Now I'm going to graph my blue function, my function g, negative 2, 0, 0, negative 1, 2, negative 2. And there is my function g, just like we did when we did it algebraically. And we can write this in slope-intercept form, y-intercept of negative 1, rise 1, run negative 2, negative 1 half is my slope. So I got there by using the table method. Now I'm going to show you the third way, reflecting points. Often students have this as their favorite method. So we're first going to graph our function f, y-intercept of 1, slope of 1 half, rise 1, run 2, and there we have our line. Now I'm reflecting over the x-axis, so here's my line of reflection. So now I'm going to identify and points, and I'm going to reflect this one. It's one above, so the reflection is one below. My next point is two above, so two below, and there's my line. And now I can write in slope-intercept form my function g, y-intercept of negative 1, and a slope of rise 1, run negative 2, negative 1 half. And there you have it three ways to reflect in the x-axis. Now it's your turn. I would like you to reflect function f in the x-axis. I would like you to write the reflection of function g in slope-intercept form and graph both functions, function f and your new function g that you've reflected in the x-axis. Go ahead and pause now. Come back when you're done. Welcome back. Let's review the solution. So the first thing I'm going to do is identify that I'm reflecting in the x-axis, so this is my line of reflection, and I'm going to graph my function f. So I need to graph my y-intercept of 3 and run rise 2, run 1 for my slope of 2, and there's my function f line. Now I'm going to reflect. Here is, I'm reflecting over the x-axis, 3 above, 3 below, 5 above, 5 below. I've reflected two points and now I have my function g and I can write that in slope-intercept form but before let's do it algebraically to check our work. So if I've done this correctly function g should be negative f of x. So algebraically that's going to be negative f of x is 2x plus 3. Distribute that negative 1 to have negative 2x minus 3. Let's check to see if we've done this correctly. Here's my y-intercept of negative 3. My slope is negative 2. Rise negative 2, run 1. And there you have it. It works. So I did it algebraically and by reflecting points. Now let's talk about reflections in the y-axis. A reflection in the y-axis can also be expressed using function notation. y equals f of negative x. So when we're reflecting in the y-axis, we're changing all the inputs to be the opposites or multiplying all the inputs by negative 1. We're going to do this three ways as well. Algebraically, we'll replace the x with negative x to create the reflected function. 
Table of values, we're going to multiply each input by negative 1 to create a new set of points to graph the function. And then we'll also reflect points by identifying at least two points on the line and reflecting them over the y-axis this time to create and graph that reflected function. Let's practice graphing a reflection in the y-axis using the algebraic method first. So we have our function g that is a reflection in the y-axis of function f. We're asked to write the function g in slope-intercept form and graph both functions. So we're going to reflect now in the y-axis. So let's graph function f, but first let's find out we're going to have a y-intercept of 1, rise 1, run 2. So there's function f graphed. Now we know that algebraically we can rewrite function g by changing all the inputs to be negative x. So we're going to replace x in our f function with negative x. Distribute that negative 1 so we get negative 1 half x. 1 half times negative x is negative 1 half x. And now I can graph this. We're going to graph it in blue. I have a y-intercept of 1, run, rise 1, run negative 2, and there is my function g. Now we're going to reflect in the y-axis using the table method. Here is my same function f, and we're going to look at our table of values. So I have picked negative 2, 0, and 2, and my outputs are, when I input negative 2, I get 0, input 0, I get 1, input 2, I get 2. That's my red function, my function f. Now, for the g function, the reflection in the y-axis, I'm going to change all my inputs. So negative 2 becomes positive 2, 0 stays 0, and 2 is the opposite negative 2, noting that my output stay the same. So let's graph these. I'm going to graph negative 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, and then I have 2, 0, 0, 1, and negative 2, 2. And there is my g function. That's using a table. I have a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of negative 1 half. Now let's look at it by reflecting points. So I still have my same function f. I'm going to graph it in red. y-intercept of 1, rise 1, run 2. And now I'm going to reflect over the y-axis. So here is one point I've selected. That is 2 on the other side of y, reflect it over, 2 away. Pick another point on the at function f, negative 2, 0. It's 2 away, 2 more away, and graph your line. So we can see that our function g has a y-intercept of 1 rise 1, run negative 2 for a slope of negative 1 half. So there are your three ways to graph a reflection in the y-axis. So now it's your turn. I would like you to reflect function f in the y-axis, writing the reflection function g in slope-intercept form and graph both functions. Please pause the video now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and reflect function f. So we are reflecting in the y-axis, so here's my line of reflection. Let's graph function f in red. We have a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 2. Rise 2, run 1. Now I've identified a point, and it is 1 away from that line of reflection, the y-axis, so I'm going to reflect it over, and there is my point. Identify a second point that is also one away. We're going to reflect it over so it's one away on the opposite side. And there's my line. So now I can write my function g, which we're going to check this algebraically. So g of x is going to be equal to f of negative x. So I'm going to change my input to negative x. So I'm going to replace this x with negative x. Simplify that. 2 times negative x is negative 2x. Now let's check this to make sure it worked as the same as reflecting our points did. So we should have a y-intercept of 3, 
Here it is. And I'm going to rise 2 and run negative 1 for a slope of negative 2. It checked out. So two ways to do it, algebraically and reflecting points. All right, now let's do some practice. I want you to use the graphs below of f and g, functions f and g, to describe the transformation from the graph of f to the graph of g. Go ahead and pause now and come back when you need to check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So when I'm looking at g, it's changing our inputs so we can see that it's reflecting over the y-axis because we've changed all of our inputs. So the graph of G is a reflection in the y-axis of the graph of F. Here's another one for you to try. I want you to describe the transformation of the function F to the function H. Rewrite function H in slope-intercept form. Go ahead and pause now and come back when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So first, we're identifying that we're multiplying all of the outputs by negative 1. That makes it a reflection in the x-axis. Now we're going to rewrite this, so we're going to replace this f of x with negative x minus 5. So I have negative or negative 1 multiplied by my f of x, negative x minus 5. So we're going to distribute the negative sign to both terms, and function h becomes x plus 5. Write function g in terms of function f so that this statement is true. Go ahead and pause the video now and come back to check your work. Welcome back. So the graph of g is a reflection in the y-axis of the graph of f. So we know that we are changing all of our inputs to be the opposite to reflect it in the y-axis. So if I replace the x with negative x, it becomes function g. Let's multiply 1 4th times negative x to get negative 1 4th x, and there we have it. Function g is equal to negative 1 4th x subtract 2. And there you have it. That's how we reflect linear functions in the x and y axis. Thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. I hope you'll subscribe and sign up for notifications for future videos and come back soon to learn how to stretch and shrink a linear function. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great day.